All right, so we're gonna go do a beautiful climb called Side Effects. You know, mountains are gonna be in the background. Climbing is gonna be super gorgeous and fun looking. This is where climbing and art Okay, so we are out here starting the filming of Noah doing some climbing today. It's gonna to be a really awesome day. The sun is shining, it's a little cold, but hopefully it'll warm up as we're out there. Today I'm kind of gonna walk you through what I do and what I think about when I'm filming climbing, especially filming a climbing sequence. Filming a sequence is a great way to provide coverage for a lot of your videos. So I'll be giving some tips and tricks along the way of what I think about when I go filming. Root, how do you train to keep your hands so steady? Yeah, I eat a lot of chocolate, so I get really, really hyped up on sugar, and then I play the game Operation. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people think that the climbers have to be really fit, but the camera guy definitely has to be more fit, because he's always running back and forth. Always running back and forth. Running, running ahead, running, running behind. Getting the shot. To the side. <laughs> So we are starting the process of filming the actual rock climb itself. The huge thing with all of this is all about coverage. So when you're creating a film, it's important to have like a very clear story arc, right? These people are gonna go set out and pursue this grand new adventure or have this cool new rock climbing experience or this amazing new surf expedition. It's important to have a story arc. However, sometimes there are moments or there are scenes in which you don't necessarily have a clear planned out objective for what is going to happen when you're out shooting because with a lot of adventure films adventures can happen when things go wrong and you know when you're outdoors and you know you're aiming for this objective sometimes things can go wrong so when things do or when things don't it's still important to provide coverage so when you go to the editing room you have all of the clips and scenes necessary to create an amazing film there are also moments in which you are hired by somebody else to bring their vision to life. So if you are a camera operator as a rock climber or a surfer or a skier, and you're being hired by another director who is there or not there, and you're just hired to get coverage of the scene, this video should help you out. Okay, it's really bright. I'm putting my sunglasses on, so I'm sorry that you won't be able to see my eyes, but it's very bright. So I'm gonna do this with sunglasses on. So the big thing I consider when I'm shooting for coverage is having a clear beginning, middle, and end of every scene. Whether or not you know what's gonna happen, you can still create a beginning, middle, and end of everything that you're shooting. So this scene of Noah and Ezra rock climbing has a clear beginning, middle, and end when I'm shooting it. The beginning is them getting stuff ready at the car, getting all their gear together, leaving the parking lot, starting off on the adventure. So the middle of the scene is them setting their bags down, getting their shoes on, and embarking on the rock itself. The end of the scene is that final portion of the climb, the, the big push, the crux, topping out, and that can be the end of the scene. This can vary depending on what your objective is. Sometimes the scene ends when you're at the car, when you're at the house. For this scene, we're choosing to end it at the top of the climb because that feels the most relevant to the story that we're producing. For each section of the scene, I'm thinking of getting three shots. For the beginning, I'm aiming to get a wide shot, a medium shot, and a tight shot. A wide shot may be Capturing them in the landscape, seeing the rock for the first time, getting a sense of scale of what this rock climb is all about. A medium shot may be, you know, their waist up, kind of looking, scouting it out, pointing out different sections of the rock that they anticipate to be difficult. And a close up may be a shot of their eye looking like really focused and intentional about what they're trying to do. Or it could be their hands chalking up or getting their, their gear assembled on their harness. So there are a lot of different shots that you could get. However, I always make sure to have a wide, medium, and tight shot. 
Now that we know a few tips, I'm going to capture Noah on this climb. We're going to get the drone up. We're going to get a nice telephoto lens to compress the background and make it look like those mountains that are behind us are actually a lot closer than they are. Doing that with a telephoto lens is a really great way to do that. So I'm going to get that on this camera, on this tripod, and we're going to start filming. Okay, so for every scene, it's important to capture high quality audio, which is why we have these lavalier microphones, which we're gonna place on Noah, so we can capture the breathing and the excitement and the authentic sounds of Noah rock climbing. And the struggle, and the struggle of Noah doing this pretty tough climb. Okay, there you go, I think there's enough battery. Thank you, filmer man. Yeah, dude, have fun. I'll be here getting- This guy's the best out. rock climbing filmmaker I know, by the way, <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> So I'm currently shooting on a 75 to 300 millimeter lens. This is a crop censored lens. And so it's a lot more magnified. I forget by what percentage, 1.5 maybe. So it's like a 450 millimeter lens. Anyways, it's very telephoto and is able to capture really cool compression with the background. So Noah is up there right now, looking sick. When I'm filming from the ground, I always try to put myself in a good position to capture both the whole climb and sections of the climb. When capturing one specific climb, you can put up a ton of different cameras in different locations, but I typically capture one section in one place and then run and capture it in another place. It may not be the best way to do it, most efficient. However, it does allow yourself some flexibility to get a lot of different shots before the climb is over. So to recap the video, Remember that you need to be capturing a wide, a medium, and tight of every section of this scene, the beginning, middle, and end. So for the beginning of the scene, you have a wide, medium, tight. For the middle of the scene, wide, medium, tight. For the last section of the scene, you have a wide, medium, tight. Capturing rock climbing and capturing surfing and capturing biking, sure, they're all a little different in their specific disciplines. However, one thing they do have in common is all of those things can be captured in this beginning, middle, end, wide, medium, tight sort of concept. And while it's really beautiful out here, and this is an important part of the outdoor adventure filmmaking industry is going to beautiful places like this and hanging out with friends and athletes such as Noah, it's also important to remember that we are storytellers first. All of these shots, they assist us in the storytelling process. And although they may look pretty and the goal is to make them look pretty, the prettier the shot will look and the more aesthetically pleasing it may seem, it will mean nothing if you don't have a good story to back it up. Thanks so much for watching. That is the end of this video. If you found this interesting, feel free to check out this other video I made about what it took for me to pack for this trip and what I brought along with me. See you in the next one.